way down in Georgia, there lives a strange collection of people. But the tie that binds them is Rasselmatch. And they love to sit around and talk about it. And that's what they fixing to do. Georgia Wrestling History proudly presents the Rasselmen of Whoopcast. We got Shane, Brian, Bill, and two mats. We got a grandpa, too. And old foot and shot. Yes, you know they finna get right. It's the wrestle me. They talk about wrestling. We are doing it again after the smash success of what was. WrestleMan's Roots Esipode 1. We are back. This is the WrestleMan, a whoop cast, and we are taking a look back at our less than humble beginnings, our extravagant beginnings, as we learned last week. Anything could happen at any time on a PCW show. We got another one lined up for you today. This show comes to you from June 1st, 2012. I don't know what in the hell is going on in the storyline, but there is a lot of wrestling on this, so no time in, no sense in wasting time. Let me bring on the rest of the gang here, because we got a few more than we had last go around. Everyone is unmuted, so if you were talking shit about me, please stop. <laughs> uh, let's start with this. Um, who we got here? I see there's Brian Blaze. Say yep. hi, Brian, so the video people can see you on the pretty video. I'm playing Mortal Kombat. Brian's playing Mortal Kombat. Nina Monet, where are you at? Yay. <laughs> I should have done it like that. Shane Marks, let me see you. You have to talk, Shane, so I can see you. <laughs> you know how this works. Sorry, I'm trying to get my order together for food, but I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> From the tower at Town 3 at Darlington, Shane Marks, our NASCAR correspondent. Um, L. Matthew Myers, he's with us too. Hello. I, you, you had a great catchphrase, no time and wasting sense. And that's going to be my t catchphrase from now on. We've got even, no time for wasting sense. Even when I'm not trying, I'm fucking great. You're <laughs> awesome. Bill, let the people see your name in print. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Live and apparently not discussing uh, beef bouillon, uh, two-time referee of the year, Daryl Hall. Two-time, two-time. <laughs> <laughs> and a first-time joiner with us, one half of the Washington Bullets, John Williams, show the people your face and that shirt. Hello, hello. Yay. I know oh, him. God, I grabbed the wrong vape. I got to throw this one away. That's empty. Can't out have that. All right, gang. So this is, again, 6-1-2012. We talked about this a little bit uh, in our pre-show meeting, but anything, anybody got any inkling, uh, just anything that resonates with them, but, and not specifically necessarily this show, but it's June. Um, we're hitting the summer of 2012. What is going on? Maybe unless, instead of even what's going on in PCW, Spody, what's going on in your life like in 2012 in June? 2012 in June, <clears throat> I actually was working at Comcast still, and we were doing like PCW shows. I think at that point, we had kind of done a few like small, like Georgia Indies and stuff like that. We hadn't really traveled outside of Georgia, I think, at that point. I'm really not 100% sure, but <clears throat> that's what we we're kind of doing at this point. So um, I know that this was this 2012, so it's Sacred Ground 3, so it's right around the time when we. Um, started doing our feud with Bordell and Kyle Matthews. And like, that really helped us a lot because Bordell was the one who got us to a lot of the shows in Tennessee. So yeah, this is like to, right before we started busting out the Southeast. Huh? <laughs> got you to cook out more importantly. <laughs> cook out Arby's. And, and they were known Bordell as impression. Die Show? Was not yeah, Die Show. show. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was gonna, I, Bill, Bill, so you, you were not around us during this time. Um, so where were you June of 2012? 
Uh, actually, I had just given up the idea of quitting. <laughs> you had just stopped thinking about quitting the business. Yeah, I had planned on quitting. I had uh, I did the Carnage Cup that year in Alabama, and Long I had time. planned on that being my last match. And then, uh, like in Andy Anderson, <laughs> booked, booked me for uh, NWA Atlanta, and I did it, and I was all right with it. And then he told me I was booked enough until he told me otherwise, and I just didn't. I was like, all right. And so but began kind of the marriage of yeah. Bill the Butcher and Pain. Pain. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we're definitely going to branch out from PCW at some point. Um, I certainly want to see any old footage I can of baby Bill Butcher, um, a.k.a. Mike Knox. So I'm going to pull up a lot of the Deep South stuff when he was working down there when he first came <laughs> up. <with that> <laughs> All right, I've stalled as long as I can waiting on Jeter. He'll be here when he gets here. Let's get it going, gang. I'm going to mute everybody real quick because the first is an audio segment, and we will have plenty of time to react to it as soon as it's over. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll mute them all. What are you, what are you asking me for? <laughs> were interrupted by Tommy Daniels, which is the fact that really upset me in the front row then, does the same thing now. <laughs> we're currently watching Devil and Valley and Ship Day, but let's just talk about that Contra segment. Oh, Myers, God. I feel like you might have, might have something to say about that. <laughs> uh, I, I, what, did we, what did they do with, uh, with Tommy? I don't, I don't remember that in, at Tommy all. Tommy just started talking, and uh, he said he was going to beat him up later. I was like, no, no, I'm not interested in that. That, got, that did not make it to the final airing of this particular episode. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's uh, th those Contras, they were uh, all right. Um, mm -hmm. I remember showing a friend of mine one of the Contra segments, and she goes, those guys are big. <laughs> I was like, uh, okay. I'm obliged to do that. How the hell did that get started? Uh, Steve and I were talking about making a tag team, and then we started joking about being named after 80s video games, and so that's why we're Tempest and Battlezone, and, um, yeah, and, and I was tickled by, uh, the Road Warriors saying, tell him big man, so we were like, what if they just kept going back and forth, handing the mic back and forth, saying, tell him big man, um, and that's pretty much I it. I mean, were those promos <laughs> off the top of your head, or did you kind of, like, have a game plan, like, right before you went out? Or were you sort of, like, the week before sort of thinking out, like, little ideas and stuff? No, because no, no, a lot of times we weren't sure if we were going to do it. And so it would, we would kind of get there, and then somebody would be – or Steve would be like, hey, you guys are going to do a promo. And so we'd sit out in that little back parking lot and kind of – spitball like well what's some stuff we can talk about like that one i think we were like oh we're gonna do like nursery rhymes 
And so, but that was really all we knew. And the rare misstep by Tempest. Yeah. <laughs> when he said uh, it was so Tempest blood so. <laughs> Which, Was it a misstep? No, it wasn't. It, I think it, I think everything he does is planned. Um, yes. To which some genius in the front row said, you tell him Vanessa, then he was very proud of himself. <laughs> yes, he was. Right. What an asshole. Was, All right. Hey, guys, I hate when fans try to take over stuff. <laughs> Uh oh, we got a we got a we got another guest coming in, guys. We got another guest rolling in here. Hang oh, on. Please. Oh my God! To what do we owe the honor? To what do we owe the honor of Bullets. the other half of the Washington Bullets? Oh, Trey Williams what? is joining us. Yo, we in here. What up? What up? My publicist, man. That motherfucker. <laughs> talking about what? Oh no! It's all good though, bro. We here. I figured I'd talk to the responsible. <laughs> uh, one that knows what a condom is. Yeah, I, I, I used to know. For a long time, I did. I used to be pretty good, man. Come on. Well, we are in here. We, you are live and you are being recorded, Trey Williams. So please do not say anything you don't want to be recorded. Um, we're talking about the condom. don't want to be recorded either. <laughs> but uh somehow Devlin Valak and Chip Day are wrestling, which is not something I expected to see tonight. With Nitrous as the ref. Oh yeah. Uh, Grandpa, let's talk about this referee and what he's wearing. Just go. Just gonna let you go, bud. Uh, that is unacceptable referee gear. Oh come on. Yeah, he gotta have long pants. What's that? Tell you that. Well, he's not in good position, and he and he didn't have on long pants, and he didn't come out to evolution <laughs> like he likes to do. Uh, work the horseshoe. Work the horseshoe. <laughs> work the horseshoe. <laughs> that is the most inside baseball wrestling thing that's ever been said on a podcast. <laughs> but it's good. Work that's the good horseshoe. <laughs> So, uh, did anybody know Devlin Valak before he showed up here? No. Yeah. He just showed up and started working. Yeah, Steve always tells the story of, like, pulling him out of the mud at some backyard show, like, literally. Like, that's a, he tells that as a literal story. I certainly didn't know anything about him. And, you know, he had a lot of improvement to do. But, by God, by the time he was finished, he had gotten himself to character-wise to a place that it, it worked and it got over. Character-wise, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yes. <laughs> I'm not here to make to lie. I didn't say that. I didn't say nothing. <laughs> that was nothing. I just think he's Chip Day was sort of the a bit of the workhorse around here at this time. He was not tied up in a particular story a lot of the time, so he could just kind of be fluid and be stuck in wherever he needed to be. Um, I think based on some actions that happen later, he is teaming with Hayden Young at this time as the team of the Young and the Reckless. Um, I don't, did that, Shane, do you think that thing ever got off the ground like it should have? I don't think it did because uh, I don't think Hayden's heart was into it anymore at that time. I think at that point he was like, a lot was going on personally. Like, I think one of his friends passed away and like it really broke him up. So it, I think at that point, he was like just not into it. And, like, unfortunately, that was, like, the one match at Sacred Ground 3 that – oh, Davey Richards is here – that didn't completely hit its mark. Like, that was the one that sort of – that one was what we kind of expected might steal the show. If I'm, I'm remembering that right, that match did happen. Yeah. Ground three, right? yeah. Um, and it, yes. it just didn't quite blow us away, and it ended up being Naja and Vandal that kind of stepped into that spot that – the one that there was a spot there to be had. And they took it. Yeah, I think they – and they had sort of the opposite um, probably mindset that Hayden Young probably had. Cause I think Hayden Young, as uh, uh, Shane Marks had said, was kind of like – kind of done with the business a little bit. And, you know, he had his personal life that he was really getting together. And I think that with Naj and Vandal, you know, they – I remember they, like, wanted that match so bad and begged and begged and begged. And that match almost didn't even happen. And then when it did – um, was it Naja Vandal or was it Naja and Vega? I'm sorry. Vega. Vega no. and Naja, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, but Vega and they wanted yeah. that match so bad, and I think that they wanted it so bad that they were like, we have to we have to steal the show or else it makes us look like 
you know, babies for just crying about. Yeah, and they, and they did. I mean, they, it was, it was incredible. It's one of the more, as far as PCW matches, just the actual match, I remember that one maybe the most out of all of them. Like, there's things that happen. Uh-oh, uh-oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. There's a very angry blazer that have showed up. I can de- Before we get into the thing that happens next, um, kudos to Chip Day, because we just mentioned that Devlin Valak was not the most polished wrestler at this time. Um, but there was nothing really bad about that thing that just happened. Chip really pulled him through a decent match. Kudos to him. And then these two assholes showed up. They're bullying the referee, <laughs> telling him he needs to put long pants on. Brian Blaze out of the ring already. Waving his arms outside. I know you wasn't here last week. They tried to miss what we said, but we are taking everything they love, and that includes you. So you're the next on our list. First it was the Contras. Now next week in this tag team season, you and Hayden Young versus. Me and G. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it. The Young and the Reckless versus We Are Three, part of the tag team season. You heard about this qualification. Give it up for two of them! We Are Three sending a message out to he. Hey, 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 next week is up. Oh, shit, no, 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 Jeff. And there was a slice. Oh, 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 oh shit. Oh, look at that team. Oh, 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 look at that like They're about to go for the Congress. Oh, <laughs> they, about, they about to show up with their AKs <laughs> for the state building. <laughs> Jagged and Jacob. Oh, oh, gosh. This is a four way, I believe. What? No. Oh, damn it. Uh, it been better because... than my God, if it was a tag team. Right, because um, Jacob was a baby face there in this time. Archie Buck and um, Ike Turner. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. But if the, the last clip was really just, if you wanted to serve up a slice of PCW, that was it. It was fucking Chip throwing kicks, the ring breaks, Steve goes crazy, and then no attempt is made to fix the ring. Just no, nah. nobody even made an effort to fix it. Get the rope out of here. Let's keep on pushing. We got a four way to get to. Guess what, boys? You're wrestling the rest of the night with two fucking ropes. I remember my life flashing before my eyes when Jeter <laughs> fell out that ring. <laughs> Surprised you didn't tell me he wasn't built for it. Whew. I mean, oh. it's like he was trying to break the bottom rope. Like he had to really make an effort to get there. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, that that brought him what was already broken. Yeah, yeah. Look at a young, limber Johnny Danger with two working knees. Uh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, he didn't have any injuries. I'm not. I'm not telling Poor sport fives out of school like somebody said last week. I just about to say that. <laughs> Oh my God! What are they telling each other? Look, brother, we're gonna be on the same side in about eight years. Just give it. <laughs> Just give it. Down. <laughs> All of I us know, in the ring for one. They're both in the ring, just like I know. 
I know who we just elected, and I can't stand it either. But we got to be quiet. We just now, we can just quiet. get rid of this ref. <laughs> 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 Everything's fine. I know. I know, brother. I can't believe it. Never even <laughs> Somebody tell this ref I don't fuck who he fucks. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm fine with seeing him at the zoo, but not in the white house. <laughs> I gotta watch it for the kids. <laughs> You, you, you put Velcro on the ceiling. Oh uh, oh. <laughs> you call him the coach. Uh, is this before Jacob Ashworth went Dr. D on anybody? It, it was. This was a very good Jacob Ashworth. Right. Um, we just didn't know. We didn't know. He didn't. He, he hadn't. Uh, he hadn't run afoul of the uh, of the of the internet yet. It was Jacob Ashworth. <laughs> Put, are you at an airport? Look. As a person. You know that is, they're doing a. Go, go ahead. You go. I want you to go. Well, they're doing the whole thing over the Atlanta area. Oh, you're the, just outside watching uh, the fucking COVID blue horn workers. <laughs> Oh, I'm enjoying this hammock, and I know this is a bad decision because I'm going to be asleep in 30 minutes. Well, there's no women's match on here, so you're going to be fine. You're going to stay awake. There's no women's match. Um, oh, wow. As a person who has now booked this show, I clearly see how you come up with a four-way that makes no sense. Like, I never would have understood this back then. Like, why, they, why are these guys all four fighting? Oh, I know why. Either somebody didn't show up or two people showed up that nobody expected to show up. So yeah. here we go. <laughs> what did you guys think about working and like working to one side? I mean, that was a kind of a funky thing about doing the Academy is that everybody was just on one side. Did, did you guys feel like that was useful no. or did it kind of fuck you up? It was useful because honestly, in a lot of like, in a lot of tryouts, I was able to work the camera because I was like, okay, I have this one side where the camera is and I know how to go ahead and tell to this particular crowd. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, that particular so crowd. Now. Everybody it, be like, oh, just work the, crowd, work, work the it, camera. It, like, oh yeah, let's work like a, like it really the did. <laughs> yeah. John Trey, I mean, you guys wrestled around. Did that? Did Did you like it better or worse? I, you know, what's weird is I didn't know any different because that's sort of how we were raised yeah. in it. It wasn't yeah. like we didn't know any better, but it did help as far as like when you actually do shows that like do TV or whatever, you know how to find the hard camera because you're just trained to go to that like one side. Yeah. Anyway, look who's joined us, Jeter. You want to tell us why there's no bottom rope? <laughs> no. Where are you at? Is he, is he chewing? Doing <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Oh, He's I got to wait for this some delicious to duck. <laughs> <laughs> My quiche hasn't fully risen yet. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody making any noise. Trey, you were, saying, you were saying something about the, the one side. Did you? What were you going to add? Oh no! Um, like when you face that the the empire sign in the ring, you can say like whatever you want. Oh like, you yeah, yeah. So it's it's benefit, whatever like. in the fuck you want. Like it's the most written on all the stuff. Like, no camera or people on either side of the ring or the back side. So like you can like you know you kind of talk it up like that. Fine, like you doing stuff. That was a cool little time. And, and but there was nobody there so you couldn't be too loud, right? But, yeah, uh, that helped you work on that as well. It was just Trey telling people, "Oh, my bad, man. I came in a little stiff with that kick." <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, don't, I, I say that one too, but it's usually what the fuck, yo. What are you doing now? You know. so, or screaming, was, "Lighten you know. up!" This is supposed to be well, fake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that kid. Yeah. Dard, really Dard, I see you I trying to get know. in here. Uh, <coughs> why is there no bottom rope? Coming in. Don't try to ignore me. Crossworth. He hit him with a crossworth. <laughs> yeah, that takes a different connotation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the the, the lighting crossworth. <laughs> wow. 
<laughs> hey, he is. <laughs> I love how emphatically Frank is telling him, no, you get down. You get down from here, Jonathan Mallet. You cannot be up here. Frank is taking it out there, man. I like Frank as a rap. He was fun. My bad. That Frank is a, a <laughs> gorgeous pile driver. I'll give that monster that. Maybe this wasn't, was that Jacob's turn, maybe? I don't know. I couldn't tell. Yeah, it must have been Jacob's turn. Popping vegetables? No, man. Oh, are they on the same team? Or are they wrestling each other? I think it's a four-way. Yeah, I think it was, it was four a four-way. Jacob four, let four, Jagged four. get the win. Oh, no. Oh, oh God, no. Uh, wow. I thought it was Archie Bucket and I thought it was a tag team. There's one thing we agree on. Gays are bad. <laughs> That's my wife paid them, and I think she's watching. <laughs> hey, referee. what title has he got there? Is it the uh, is it the PWR title that Jacob's carrying around? Oh, probably. Mm -hmm. PWR. What is that? Uh, it was uh, TNT at the time. It was Jen and Matt Sales' thing. Here we go. Supernatural oh, wow. versus oh, oh. Ken, and I don't remember his last name at all. Finnegan, maybe? It was something. Was it something? No, oh, Shamrock. Yes. It was Shamrock, I think. It was Ken Shamrock. Shamrock. Oh. It was that Ken was Shamrock versus Supernatural. Supernatural really? versus Ken Marco Shamrock. Marco Sullivan or something? I thought his last name yeah. was Sullivan. It is. It's Ken Sullivan, hey. not Ken that Shamrock. Dude. I mean. <laughs> We're Shamrock. Ken Lucky Charms. I'm going to remove myself from he this. Is it the one that Steve Cole 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 Yes. Yes, that weird ass conversation where it's like Steve was just like, and you fucking kill yourself. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> so we had that match at the goat farm where we were all drunk and fucking up the spots. Oh yeah. Uh, I was not um, there. Uh, <laughs> that I, I left before that part happened. Oh my god, they had the Bella show and that was fantastic. You're a robot I, foot. You're a drunk robot. That match they was so the awful. The last, the, you know it. But you're going on Lasky. mask. It. You've been muted. <laughs> <laughs> is the goat farm even still a thing anymore? It mm -hmm. is. It's just really expensive now to get and stuff into it. Mm. I never oh, saw one nuts. of those. It feels like I would have loved it, but oh, time. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -mm. And those were sort of like non sequitur shows. It was just trying to mm -hmm. branch out, and they that ran was really, day. really good bad wrestling. Yeah, that's what that show was. Well, it, it, we we did take chances. I'll give us that. Never yeah. did I mean, one of those shows. The thing about it was you'd wrestle oh, yeah. like it started in the morning, and every yeah. hour they'd do a match. And I think we thought we were done, and everybody started just like drinking and stuff. And then <laughs> Steve told us we had a match at like eleven forty-five p.m. And everybody's like, wait, what? And it was a six man, and everybody was just like, screw it up. But I mean, even if, if, even if you guys were fucked up, you didn't fuck that match up. That was their side that like jacked that match up. I ref that match. <laughs> so very versatile. Matt Myers doing it all. Yeah. <laughs> so, so who was in the match? John and Trey and Marco? Yeah, and I know that Sullivan was in it because he was the one. It was Sullivan. Specifically him missing a thing. And that's when Steve was like, you need to kill yourself. Brandon Cage was in that too, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, Brandon Cage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, don't know who the, I don't know who the six was. Okay. I'm gonna... I, remember, I remember my part. We was there. We did the morning show and then the afternoon show. And then I think we was booked at Peach State or something, so we had to leave. And then I talked to John like the next day, and he was just like, man, you should have stayed. <laughs> and it was just, just, just John laughing, telling me, Steve, talking about everybody should kill themselves. And I was like, Jesus, what <laughs> happened? <laughs> I mean, he had this, he kind of had the same, a similar speech in the afternoon because we just did one long gauntlet match. Oh, yeah. I, think I was, I was like the sixth or the seventh person into the gauntlet match that actually, and before me, was nobody worked the Olympic. That was a gorgeous pull though. Nobody worked gimmick or nothing. Tried to tell the story. They just went out there and just started doing stuff crappily. 
And then once it was over, Steve just came in and just yelled at everybody. Those shows are seem always – I've never had to do one, but they all seemed hard to me because it is hard enough to – oh, my boss. Hard enough to wrangle wrestlers and be focused into doing a regular-style show, let alone when it's once every hour and they're, you're in a new environment and there might be some even some cool shit going on that you want to go look at and all that. It is tough to keep everybody's attention, keep everybody's focus on something for that long. Yeah, that, that was the weird part because it was just like in a random festival and it was all like hipsters and stuff. So you're wrestling in front of people who <laughs> could care less, you right. know, and they're but just kind of walking around. That was no different from working the academy anyway. Hey, fuck you. Yeah. Because half, half those fans, because half those fans didn't really care anyway because they were theater people. Right. Or Jonathan Wynn family. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't so no that, hipster, Shane Marks. I don't know what you're trying to imply. I want to talk about you in particular. No, I don't trust you. Yeah, and, that's true. And you know why. What is oh, happening? Oh, Japanese <laughs> dropkick. <laughs> so I, I can add a little bit to this match, is that uh, we I helped make up Supernatural's gimmick. Is mm. that he, he was supposed to... Yeah, I know. Um, but it was supposed to be a thing that there was, like, pieces of his mask that he could rip off and it would change that he would evolve as the match went. That was the original plan for him is that he was going to be kind of like this, become more of a monster, like Jekyll and Hyde kind of thing. And he was going to have different pieces of his mask that would rip off and, and whatever. And he would, he would wrestle differently as different parts of his mask. Changed. Oh, is it true that it missed? Oh God, that mystic star was going to be the first guy and whatever happened. And it wound up being the person who it is. I, I can't speak to that. I don't know. I think Steve might have told me that before. I can't get over the heavy fucking TNT influence on these shows. I didn't know a thing because I didn't know what that was. But, like, looking back on it, I think Sullivan's a TNT guy. I think Ashworth had the title. We saw Matt Sales last time. Um, uh -huh. Supernatural might have worked up there some. But it was a heavy, heavy TNT thing. Um, Zach, I don't want I'm, I'm going to mess up. One of them's a child molester. One of them is not. I'm just going to say Zach. Um, Daniel, Zach Daniels. <laughs> Zach Daniels was, was a TNT guy. I think they both were. Actually. That is a gorgeous – that's a nice move that Supernatural's doing right there. When he was on and remembering his stuff, it was great. And here comes that fucking double stomp, I'm sure. Nope. Mm -hmm. Cool elbow oh. drop. Well, second coolest elbow drop. <laughs> you know what? You could say about Juan. Is like, even if you're like, man, some of that stuff was kind of sloppy. It's like when he hits it, he hits it. Like he'll always come up with like something different in the ring. But it's watch your head. Even as short as he is, he's having trouble up there. Uh. <laughs> and it's <laughs> yeah, you barely moved. I'm just gonna choke you. Don't be a hero, Daniel. Hmm. That was nice. Yeah. It looks like we had a referee shortage tonight, too, because uh, we saw Lewis earlier. Frank's been back to back here. And yeah, Duke must not. Duke must have had a wedding. Woo! Here we go, boys. Hey, Here honest, we I go. Lewis, I thought he was a referee. <laughs> I swear. And then I realized he was a referee. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry, man. I thought he was a referee. <laughs> Sorry, I'm truly sorry, Charlie Murphy. We have now the team of, um, I almost called him by a shoot name, Leroy and Grotesque versus our favorite tag team here, Master J and Siler Cross. Master J and Siler Cross. Master J not wearing his hat, which is upsetting. <laughs> Very upsetting. I think Master J and Siler Cross were the first people I ever were like, are they shooting on me? <laughs> Boy. <laughs> hey, hey, you know what? I think these guys might be shooting on me. <laughs> I, think, I felt like the Steve Martin and the jerk where he's like, hey, these cans are defective. Because I was just like, man, people are just really knocking the shit out of me tonight. And I was like, wait a minute. Uh, that may be me Jay might be, might be partially my fault. Uh, oh, yeah. Really, Bill? You did you have a hand in training, help in training him? Well, he trained at, w at A4. So yes, with me and the hooligans. <laughs> well, then just say no more. Uh, but please do. It's a podcast. Keep saying it. <laughs> he trained with. with uh, he was there at the same time as me and the hooligans, and we we tended to, you know. <laughs> <laughs> 
We had seven <laughs> 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 but it was on him. Um, Shane Marks, you are my resident expert on Leroy. Give me a little bit of background on him. Um, he, when he first started, he was trained, he started training before Steve got there with, while well, Sarge was still there. Hmm. So he was like the last remnants of Sarge back in original A4 before Steve took over. And so that was about, I want to say about early, mid-2001, so it was like three years before I got there. Did Sarge come up with the Leroy gimmick, or did Steve come up with it? No, he came up with that when PCW restarted. Oh, okay. Because he, he was that? always, because he was always Tacoma, well, East Coast Lightning Tacoma, when he first started out. Mm-hmm. The Leroy thing came when, like, when PCW started coming back, back, back going. I mean, when you've got a name like that, you might as well. It's a really great fucking name just to have. Um, <laughs> I ran into Master J uh, maybe like eight, ten months ago at the grocery store. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and Leroy is the, is the rare wrestling success story where he, he did his stuff. He wrestled as long as he wanted to. And then said, oh, okay, I'll just go have a successful life now. And he's <laughs> doing just fine. It's great. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Rachel's really keeping grotesque in check with that. Fucking, yeah, she's really uh, that Achilles <laughs> hold. <laughs> if she releases. There's a little button on his. No, not a lot of people know this. There's a little button on his uh, calf. That, That's what turns him into the monster. Yeah, when you let off of it, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, grotesque can beat up anybody, men, women. He don't care. He does not. <laughs> Real question is, which grotesque is this? I, I think this is the grotesque. Uh, <laughs> K-Fade. I think that Jay is the only one No, it ain't. What? The second one. Jay is the only one to come. Shard, who do you think it is? I can look at the stands and tell you who it is. Fucking tell me. We ain't keeping no secrets here. <clears throat> That's their turn called Brian Blaze. <laughs> oh, I think that Brian Blaze was smaller back then. Yeah, that's not me. If anything, that's Patrick. We will, when, he, when he gets in, we'll know because there was like all the grotesques were great, but there's only one grotesque because everybody else just hadn't worked on yes. that stupid mask enough, and they <laughs> you could just tell their depth perception wasn't there. His name is Jeff Cobb, and he is now <laughs> doing big things in New Japan and <laughs> AEW. I mean, he's great. He is, he is great. That I, I, I can tell you that might have been the last time I was truly shocked in wrestling was when Grotesque won the title. I thought there's no way in hell. Like that how in the world? That was. <laughs> <laughs> As I recall, time. your ass lost in the first fall of that elimination match. What it's a, a fucking loser. motherfuckers to take me down. What a g- you know what? I, I I blame that on bad management. <laughs> like I no. say it. Like I say it. That's not me. When I left like to your Jay, oh, that, that is like doing. Yeah, that, that is the thing. grotesque, right? That is because that right there is the grotesque spot, yeah. and. I don't remember a whole lot of other people doing that one. Meanwhile, Leroy is just going to town over here. He should. I kicked him too hard about three, four times. I mean, well, to be fair, it is solid cross. Yes. And it was and it was probably a receipt, brother. Who knows what he might have done in there? The only guys I had to shoot on was that team right now. (laughs) (laughs) As you see, Myers, Brian did not ask questions. He just took action. I had to I had to get punched in the face like four times before I was like, wait a minute. I think this guy uh, made me out to get me. Nah, I, I told him lighten up like two times and then it was like, well, you need three strikes you out. And you start this. <laughs> that is the Brian Blaze rule, guys. It is three strikes and you are out. That's a good rule. Get on up for this. You didn't. But hey, you got it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> and I bet you he blamed everybody else. Man, he got uh, the ring wrong. I couldn't get up because the ring was messed up. Because <laughs> Jeter broke the, the ring. was in my way. <laughs> and Grotesque and Leroy stand tall. Yeah. That's the thing you didn't think you were going to hear today. <laughs> Jeter. 
Come on, big old swipe. Let's go. Let's keep it moving. <laughs> I, I like mine at least is in Viewmaster Vision. It's like oh, 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 shit. oh shit! Here we go. Here is we this go. One, is this one y'all go for an hour? I, I thought so too. It oh, is this, two out of three this, falls. If our is it, is that right? The yep. two out of three falls match was an hour. Okay, so no, this is not that. Was this pre or post? I think this is pre. I think no, this is pre too because when when I saw this pop up, I immediately looked to my left to see if my brother was there because he is still mad that that fucking match ended in a draw. <laughs> <laughs> He is still upset about it. So, so John Williams going into this match, excited, nervous. How you feeling, man? Um, a Ready little bit wrestle. of both, obviously. But I felt like I was glad that it was uh, Shane Mark of all people because I knew that it, even if it wasn't going well, like at all or whatever, he could always cover things. Like he always knew. Like he he's very good at like feeling things out and knowing how to work with people and all that kind of stuff. So like of all people, I was like, thank God it was him. And I think that's probably why uh, it was me and him in that match. But like, I know that like for example, if it was like I don't know Andy, look at that nimble son of a bitch. Like, God damn. <laughs> what? Look how fucking nimble he is. Look at him, Valerie right Twinkle Toes over here. Oh, Twinkle Toes. <laughs> Um, how do you go into this thing knowing you don't have a fucking bottom rope because some fucking uh, asshole broke it in the first segment? I must say, personally, I know for, for sure it wasn't really the biggest of deals because I don't really use a bottom rope for anything. I mean, the only thing is, like, for submissions and stuff, but even then, you can grab the middle rope. It wasn't like, oh, no, there's no – like, if there's no top rope, that's like a – and I think that did happen at one point, but – that's like that would have been worse. I mean, it also helps just to fucking chain wrestle. Yeah. Did you go because into it knowing you wanted to chain like that, Shane, or did you kind of make that call on the fly? Um, I rarely ever call chain wrestling. If it just happens, it happens. It usually just depends on who I'm in the ring with. Like I know with John, like he loved he, at that place at that time. He loved to chain wrestle. So it was like, all right, well, fuck, we'll just do that, and we'll just go from there, and we'll work the match towards that. Do you, you had the, um, Rachel as your manager in this? Did you do you like having a manager, or do you feel like that's helpful, or do you feel like it's kind of one he of those fucking things better? Like <laughs> <laughs> it's a goddamn hindrance. <laughs> I mean, where where things would go aside, but uh, uh, no, because it was. Because at this time, like, before her, I'd never had one. Mm -hmm. So it was it was different because I, I was learning how to be – I was learning how to work for, with, for two people instead of just one. Yeah, because she was so, pretty new. She was pretty green. Yeah, she was still green as hell there too. But some, some – we made it work as, for work, as long as we could. Working yeah. for two people, this fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> Working for two, this motherfucker. <laughs> I mean, what do you think she added to your gimmick? <clears throat> uh, she is my, <laughs> um, she is my heat magnet. Yeah, because she got the most booze, and I just have to follow behind like I do my other manager. Don't you try to fucking smooch me. <laughs> <laughs> So Trey Williams, what's your thought what process? And sorry, I'm not, I, I just I am I'm, I always like hearing how people go into stuff. Go fight, doctor! I'll get out of the way. I'm just here to make jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Trey, what what was your take? Uh, I mean, is is was it is it easy for you to invest in this match, or do you feel like you're like, what the fuck am I doing here? I need to. I would <laughs> I could watch this from the back. I love both of these. I would watch this. I remember that hour. I watched shit out all of that shit. <laughs> 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 I'm just having a good time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not part of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't go, I didn't go over this year with them. But they didn't come over. And I'm like, I'm just going to get my brother on. And then, what's some shit happen? I'm like, oh, oh, I'm like, there we go. Like, that's you. So, it was a really open map when you do it. I remember a lot. So. Well, and Myers, you've certainly done this too. Like, as a manager, <laughs> excuse me, as the manager of the year, um, I do like to not know as much as I cannot know and still be, you know, 
it's, it's, on the one hand, I want to know everything in case something gets messed up and I can say, oh, we're supposed to be here, do this. Yeah. Da, 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 da. On the other hand, it does help if I'm surprised somewhere along the way because I get to really react to shit. Or like Trey was saying, when it's jumping, I get to just react to it. I don't have to work for two, as some people think they have. I don't have to like – I'm at some. there are some points where I am just kind of lost in it. Like, yeah, my dude's really beating the shit out of this dude. This is great. Yeah, Look at now you are. And I do think it totally, it totally helps as far as – if there's like a lack of reaction from the crowd and stuff like that, if you have a person that's helping cheer and then another person on the other side helping get the heat, that really helps. And we obviously see it with like AEW and what's going on there because they had just them having like seven people or whatever, just cheering and booing, totally helps guide the match as opposed to like you're getting natural reactions. You have somebody out there who's like amplifying everything. So when I hit yeah. a big move and Trey jumps up and starts cheering, and the crowd knows like, oh shit, we gotta jump and start cheering. Yeah. And yeah. then, and likewise, it when you have a good manager, God damn, Shane Marks, you are really good, but fuck you. Um, <laughs> um, but it's also, you know, as you get seasoned with it, you know when to just lay the fuck out too, because sometimes you can mm-hmm. you can screw it up. Um, Myers, your thing with Bill is particularly different because you have to be one half of the personality. Um, right. Do you like I, you're. Are you are you conscious of that, or is that just part of the thing you do it? Um, you know, Bill Bill isn't an, isn't annoying, and so uh, Bill is, uh, is is cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, Bill the Bill the wrestler. <laughs> oh, fuck! <laughs> I just was making sure you're still here. Uh, no, but Bill is a, Bill is cool. It, it's it's hard because like I do feel like I have to like cool Bill a bit because he's he's fun like he, people like watching him and and him beating the shit out of people is always a hard thing because they want to yep get into him yep that is that, that <laughs> what? like it, it's an you're essential you are essential to that thing because monster man going crazy no matter what he's doing unless the baby face is super hot monster man going crazy is a good thing to watch and it's hard it's hard to keep that getting the reaction that it needs to get without some schmarmy fucking br- limey fuck to immediately hate it. Yeah, I, I get more Jimmy Hardish whenever he and I work together. You too. Yeah. You have to get very honky, baby. Honky Let's get that baby, drop kick on, up, baby. Brody. Let's get on, that baby, drop baby. kick up, bud. Um, what I was going to say, that what I like about what Trey's doing at ringside is kind of like the Japanese thing of where it adds the reverence to the match of where you're like, oh shit, okay, he's here. This is really important. And he's and he's in deep concentration. I mean, he, he animates whenever the time is right, but I like that he's uh, really giving the, the match a lot of focus. Bill, this is the first time you're seeing some of this. What are you thinking so far? I mean, it's it's all the normal. Like they're both great, and I knew that already. So like, it's not, you know, nothing helpful. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but just overall, show overall. What are you thinking? Because I know some of this shit you've never seen. You know, so it's so weird to me is that I did I wasn't even really aware of Platinum or Empire until probably like twenty. 20- 14? Yeah. Damn. And I don't know how. Like, I don't know how I, you know, like, it's not like Georgia Wrestling's big. So I don't know. I don't know how I wasn't aware of it. Well, you were gone a lot, right? You were, you were working IWA and stuff at this point a lot, right? That was back in 08, 09. Okay. So you, you were around. Yeah. I mean, I always had, a, had what I like to call a leisurely schedule. <laughs> like, <laughs> I work a gentleman's schedule. Yeah. I did, you know, like probably usually two or three shows a month. Like okay. I wasn't super in. Because I was, you know, I, I was trying to quit and then didn't, but I still wasn't like super in love with it at the time. Based on like just the feel and sort of the general uh, themes yeah. to the show, do you think it's, we, we kept that same vibe? It's hard to tell because we're not watching it on audio. But it feels like I mean the the little bit in the beginning like it seems like it was the same idea where it's yeah it's a more intimate venue and the fans are like are a regular 
group of fans like that you have every week or every, you know, two weeks or whatever? There's Duke Corey. I just noticed he's here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Duke looked at the match list like, no, no, no. Yeah, give me this one. Yeah, main yeah, event, bro. I'll take that one. And that's the other thing. This is not the main event. Uh, yes, it is. Oh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> this is Hogan Rock, brother. <laughs> so, Daryl, uh, go because are you there? Are you talking to your neighbor? I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you would have heard the neighbor. <laughs> Uh, so you came to these shows, and at this point, you had you had a, a history of watching wrestling, but not in participating. Um, what what about it did you like? What did you not like about these shows? Ooh, boy! I love just having the action right there in my face, uh, being right there. Sorry, I was Jeter falling out the oh. ring, with dead man in your face. Um, I love being able to participate participate and get a reaction from the wrestlers and give them the reaction they were looking for. I mean, if we liked you, we, we let you know. And just seeing the, the, the way that they would feed off of our energy and do a lot of things based on our reaction. Yeah, Look at that cocky that I enjoy. there. Like, and, and that was the thing, like, yeah, I know. We were annoying and we were loud and we were over the top, mm-hmm. but Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a it was rare that we didn't go the way we were supposed to go out of a you guys were good and we were in y'all we were in the show that fat ass on the end look dude. i cannot speak for that dude i cannot speak <laughs> it was a different breed yeah but yeah. for the most part from from here down um, <laughs> it was we we did like we were supposed to do and quite frankly, if there were times where it was fucking dead, you know, we would we would turn up to like to cover that. Like we we were I say it all the time, we were always pulled on the same we were pulling the rope the same way you guys were. And it it, it just worked. It was our thing that worked. I mean, look at these two fuckers right here. Look at them. Just look at look how look how much how fun conscious they had. was that? How conscious was it? I, it was definitely conscious for me because by this time I had been doing this, you know, I'd been coming here for, for a month, for months on the end straight. And, you know, these are my friends. Um, I'm not too far from starting to do this. And like, this was my company as far as look at that motherfucker. Um, like this was my wrestling company. This was a thing that I was invested in. I wanted it to be successful. I wanted it to be good. So it would be conscious for me at some point. Like, okay, this one is not working. Let's either, you know, really get on somebody and give them the business so everybody else around can know who they're supposed to not like. Um, yeah, so I thought about it. But most of the time, you know, that was probably a 50-50 split. The other part of the time, like, there's re- I get, they get real reactions. I was mad at Shane Marks when he did what the fuck he did. And I'm still <laughs> mad at Shane Marks for doing what the fuck he did. He oh, broke my child's heart. Um, <laughs> I mean, I bought shoes from Trey all the time out of respect for how he wrestled. <laughs> Thank you. Even Man, back then, I was supporting hard, the wrestling bro. economy. You ain't lying. You ain't lying, boy. That shit gets you by, bro. You look at some period on that shit. I, I ate a lot of meals on the thing. So, yes, sir. <laughs> I do appreciate those things, sir. Oh, God, that spine buster. Woo-hoo. Every time you brace for it. Oh. Hey, but you know what's pissing me off, though? John's kick pad and knee pad combination. Like you got the all black one, you can see the blue in between. Yeah. They're like, no, I hate down. that shit. Look, you trying to pull them up and shit. It's horrible. <laughs> I hate that. How long were you guys <laughs> in the business at this point? 2012. Uh, three years. Uh, three years yeah. at a lot of shows because um, Sam Stone started in 09. Okay. But yeah. I guess five years total. If you want to start with weird train, but we didn't do no shows in 2007 when Sam Stone started. I, I have to say, I was there when you guys were like working in the ring, and Steve goes, uh, what, what are you guys doing? You're like, we're wrestling. And, uh, and, and I really thought he was going to beat the shit out of you guys. I really thought, like, because you guys were like, we're good. 
And and he was like, oh yeah, let's go to the ring. And I was like, oh my God, Steve's gonna fuck people up. And uh, like, <laughs> I, cause I like walked with everybody to the ring. Cause I think I was there as you guys were like working stuff and was maybe refing. I don't know. And, uh, but I remember thinking that, but then you guys did so well that he didn't try to hurt you. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. He told Shane Mark to pass to her. That's what he told her. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, just, you know, yeah, Patrick, I was, I was there. Uh, Hayden Young and Shane Mark, yes, sir. I remember uh, Hayden Young dropped an elbow right on my jaw. He just jumped oh, it up like he was doing a bigger elbow drill. He dropped I mean, it right that was on my more Hayden than me. Let's not. Nah, Myers, yeah. Myers, do you think you might be doing commentary on this match? Oh, I don't know. I, and I'm, I'm not trying. That sounded like a setup. I'll, I'll leave the clip in here in a minute. There'll be some audio that pops up because I think it's you. Um, and what you do, if it's you, and I'm pretty sure it is, is absolutely fucking masterful. Uh-oh. I think we got time before we get to that spot. Shane Marks. Hold on. Oh. I heard a grinder top. Trey, is that you? A grinder top? Oh, God. <laughs> you put on mute. <laughs> you go on mute. Um, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> She's that trying to talk. No, I don't think we got time. I think it happened right after this. I was going to get Shane Marks to tell the kid and play story. Pepsi Plunge. Uh, I thought it was too, Brian, but it's not. It's the fucking, uh, it's the Rollins killer. No, no, it's not. I think that maybe that happens later. Mm. Damn. Um, oh. I love that ring. <laughs> and I, she's I, still going today. It, it's great. I mean, really, it's. <laughs> My God, we hadn't even had a chance to use our fancy new padding. Yeah, didn't we use it for one? I don't one think. Show? I don't know that we ever used it, Brian. Damn. I don't think we did. We'd use it for practice that night. I don't think we ever used it. Yeah, for... we practice on it. That's yeah. about it. Uh oh, he's calling for that DVD. I've seen it so many times. It's R over, Spody. It's, it's over. It's over, Spody. You're done R for, R bud. R You're R done. R There's no getting out of this. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> oh, 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 now look at Trey, look at Trey. <laughs> I, have, I have taken my hat off. I'm so mad. <laughs> what a professional. <laughs> I always like calling Shane's matches because I and I think because Shane always goes at a good pace where he gives you time to tell the story. Uh and so I would always stress that Shane was very clinical. I was like, he's like a doctor. He just dissects someone. And I always went back to that. I always really liked calling his matches because it's of that. like he knows thugonomics very well. Yeah. <laughs> and basic, basic thugonomics, <laughs> yeah. But I mean for life. Uh, Rollins, get him! Oh my God, can he get him over? Nice. Oh, roll H. Oh, roll H. Oh, roll H. Oh, roll H. I don't know who I am in this in, in, while I'm calling this. I guess I'm just me. I think it might. You might have just came on as you because it's. I think you forgot to be Oscar worthy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're at this time, Myers. You would have probably been. Oh, oh, you might have been O-Dub at this point. Maybe. I think because, like, I stopped touring in 2011, 2012. So I may not have come. I may have just come back as, as Dick Face. Yeah. <laughs> Old Dick Face. <laughs> Old Dick Face. St. <laughs> Marks is so much smarter. Look how smart he is. He's so proud. He's so pleased with himself. <laughs> He's so smart and pleased. Oh, I got you in your own mood. Oh, no. Oh, that was sweet. Nice. 
Trey cannot believe it. Lex Luger cannot believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say about Rachel in this match, uh, I like the bangs. I like that she, I like that she has the bangs. She's really going full Elizabeth School of Managing. <laughs> Okay. Oh, only one. Ha Look, Trey. Well, I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing, <laughs> Trey Williams. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you the... sneaky black bastard. Dynamite soul with that damn stick. Oh, he's done it again. He's oh. done it again. Trey Williams, I remember fresh off of Dynamite. a job interview. I remember specifically everybody <laughs> yelling at Dynamite, like, motherfucker, you better hit this spot on time. You better be there on time. You better be there on time. I remember that specifically. Oh, uh, and now the main first, event. Right. Oh, boy. Wow. Wrestling McWrestling. Who's that fat fuck? Uh, look at these cool cats. <laughs> yeah. <for> smoking <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we we just just outside the park. Little burnt. Hello, blur before you should learn a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, there is EJ. EJ is there. Huh. Wow, I hope he was mad. <laughs> I'm sure he was. <laughs> well, sure he was. was. <laughs> like, man, this motherfucker won again. <laughs> Fuck dynamite. <laughs> So the main event is Corey Hollis versus Fred Yehi for what I don't exactly know. Uh, there you go. For the hell of it. I don't know, because why really not? Uh, uh, right. Hollis, like, belt. I mean, this is the last dark like, match. Uh, okay, so PCW's ring was small as fuck, but Corey Hollis, like... It's time. Kinda, no, but he enjoyed, like, uh, he owned the center. Uh, uh, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> what? No, find your point. He, oh, he, 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 he owned the center of the so. ring. <laughs> no, well, no, like he had his ground from the beginning of the match. Of it, yeah, uh, he don't need to do too much damn walking. Damn. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> you ever like tricking asshole? <laughs> there's not a lot for me to say here they're just doing rest that's what i'm saying this this show was so much wrestling heavy like there was yeah. only um the contrast thing in the beginning and there, there might have been a couple of promos that i cut out but like it was not there was really after the contra stuff there's very little silliness it was just straight up wrestling which is which is a bit of an oddity and we didn't really advance a whole lot of stories we set up that we were going to get Young and the Reckless versus Big F and well, not Big F and Deal yet. We are three mm -hmm. um, in the next yeah, show, uh, and then everything who else is kind of Chip and uh, Hayden. Chip Hayden. And, uh, wait, did that man. match even happen? No, that, I don't think it did. For next I don't remember what I don't remember working on at no, all. I don't think that's the exact like same thing. I don't remember much of of, of Hayden at all. Um, because again, y'all mentioned he was ha he was going through some stuff there. So, and that's that's maybe partly why the match at Sacred Ground suffered is the build kept getting cut up, mm -hmm. and yeah. they didn't get to really. Yeah, because most of the time he wasn't there, so they're kind of working. With okay, him. so y'all don't see this—the masamune of this shit, like of only the center of the fucking ring. Uh, did where... you say masamune? Yeah, that's yeah. a Japanese swords master. What are you yeah, talking about? Yeah, it, it's just a. You know what? Never mind. It's it's Jesus the Christ. idea of just already owning a match before, like. Well, what you're seeing is so, somebody that doesn't have happy feet. That's mm -hmm. what you're seeing. Yeah, true. Yeah, <laughs> that's forget. all that is. Corey this probably is still, did come this in is still like fresh doing fresh what year. we're trying to do. Now this is Fred's still rookie year, and Corey's been around fucking um, Jimmy Rave at this time. Was so true. right. Oh, wow. So he understands how, you know, to stand your ground in the ring and. Make it small for somebody. For somebody. Fair enough. <laughs> well, and I also think too, like Fred was always like super. Re like for example, I think it's kind of like a little bit of a difference. Like when you watch me. And, oh, so you uh, thought Shane that Marks, I was thinking about Shane Fred Russell, when I said that? We're working together, and I'm listening to Shane Marks. But I think with Fred, Fred's like, 
I'm gonna do my shit. If you can't get out, you can't get out. And I think Corey Hollis is like, well, I'm gonna do my shit. So All right. I think there's <laughs> right. more of that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I I, I wasn't talking about Fred when I said. We know. We know. But, Robot. Oh, okay. Well, in this Damn match it. especially, it's, it'd be kind of shitty because you don't have the bottom rope to grab onto. Yeah. And so, yeah. like, to get out of stuff, you're like, uh, you better uh, stretch. What do you want me to do now, bud? Uh, fuck you your slide out the ring. Fuck your submission hold holder just by standing up because that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> you know I ain't got no other way to get out of this. I guess you're going to get kicked in the face. <laughs> no swipe at it. Oh, no swipe or no damn swiping. But you know what, though? Swipe that ass, boy. At that time, Fred, that's how Fred was. You, you, Fred was that kid, especially then, that you had to hit him for him to understand it. As far as, like, yeah. kind of almost being in a shoot? Yeah. 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 Because yeah. you got Fred, Fred came from, he's got that wrestler's mentality. You got to hit me to let me know, let you, for me to know you're here. Mm -hmm. Particularly at that particular time. Did you wrestle with Trust him back, no. back in this era? Uh-huh. Did, did you wrestle with him uh, back in this era, or did you train with him? I think we all wrestled him. Yeah, we I wrestled, wrestled him. How did yeah, you get him to him. calm down? I mean, because he can't do that shit with you because you're too big. Uh, it's – with him, I just told him, I'm going to let him know, like, listen, it's the same thing with me. Like, listen, I'm going to swing, and I'm going to swing like I'm trying to take your head off. If you're there – that's your, your your fault. I'm giving you heads up now. I duck so every it, time. So it was <laughs> so in wrestling, Fred. We both had kind of had the same mentality. Mm -hmm. There really wasn't anything for me personally. Who was Fred's guy as far as like teaching him stuff and kind of like talking to him afterwards? Jay. 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 Okay. Yep. That makes sense. And we didn't get a ton of these these kinds of matches. <laughs> Sorry. What is that? Ooh. You're going on mute. That robot is getting out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> that robot has been in the oil. <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't have a ton of these matches. So when they did happen, and it was just a, a work rate match, it was a special thing back then because I can remember this one and, you know, uh, when Davey came in and when it was Kyle Matthews when they would come in, um, those matches were always special because it was, and that's that's great to, to, to use the style. That's how you use the style to its perfect benefit is you don't have it in every match. You don't have it on every show. So when you do get to see one of these, it is a special moment and everybody kind of gets very Japanese in these moments. Like you see us just sort of lean back and watch them because we're, we're not bored. We're just enjoying the thing that's happening. Yeah. Part of the making it thirty-one flavors, so you're not just having the same flavor over and exactly. over. Exactly. Like, yeah, you, and I you, think it was. I think it was a testament to Steve's booking. I think that he was always sort of uh, like sort of jockeying for position, trying to figure out stuff. And I think like he would kind of go to like different promotions and see guys and pull them in. And I think when he saw like, for example, Corey Hollis, and because of the Georgia wrestling thing, you know who's getting buzzed, you know who's getting hot. And I think this is when he was fully trying to get the the sort of best of the Georgia guys. That's why you see, like, you know, Jacob Ashworth, who had, you know, we can joke about him being a, a non repentant white supremacist all we want. But he was. He did repent uh, to me personally. Okay. <laughs> but he was, oh. like, all over all that Georgia stuff. And that, and so was Corey Hollis. And I think that's why that's the main event. So Corey, Corey Hollis was, like, the up and coming guy. And the structure of the show, I talked about how this, A, it looks like definitely a show that did not go by the booking sheet. Hardly at all. Um, I think I know it well enough to know now when things didn't materialize the way that they were supposed to. And that's what this looks like. It looks like Steve had to rebook everything here at the last minute. And the structure of the show was one that put us in the moment that the wrestling match like this with two guys that one that was new, one that was, or hell, both that were new, one that was not a PCW guy. This is why this is the main event, because that is the main event that he set up for this. He built stair-stepped up to this thing like, you've seen a lot of wrestling tonight. Now you're going to see the pinnacle of wrestling, and we'll save the storytelling stuff for next show. So this is kind of an interesting thing I always hear, of, like, whenever people talk about Steve, they're always like, everybody works for so cheap or works for free or whatever. What do you think someone like Corey is doing on this show? I mean, what do you think he gets out of it? Money. And that's for anybody. More exposure. Do you think it was an exposure thing? Because we were such a small show. 
Yeah, but we was at the time we was only people paid. working <laughs> this close Corey to Atlanta, right? Corey yeah. got paid. Corey got paid. <laughs> Corey got paid. But <laughs> 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 yeah, I would I would venture to say Corey got paid, and I would also say Ryan. that Steve is an excellent salesman as well. Yeah, um, okay. and also you know at that it's Christmas. Also at that time, you know, Corey and Chip were riding together, so. Yeah, mm, that's, that's another cool. thing. Is like two for was, one. And uh, I do know this about Corey. Is what the hell is that? I don't know. I don't know who has a Blair child. Witch Shard, project. maybe a Trey's got you? a lot of them. Maybe they're Trey's kids. Yeah, you went on, Trey went on mute. Those were Trey's kids. Um, but uh, <laughs> but but Corey would Corey would sometimes just oh I'm here I don't have anything to do let me wrestle. Mm-hmm. Like he was he was also that dude too. So it, it could have been any of those things. But yeah, and no, even though it was a small crowd. Um, there was a buzz, especially at this time. It was sort of, well, let me see who, 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 who's causing all this is what it kind of was because guys would come in there and some of them certainly would get paid. Um, but guys would come in just to kind of see what it was all about. And it was a Friday night. That's another thing that was the benefit there too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, I think that at this time we were, PCW at that point was really coming into its own. And Steve had just won we Booker really of the Year. Mm-hmm. We were really fighting our stride at this point. Yeah. Because at this I, point also, I think, um, didn't we, were we at the Masquerade? Well, not at Masquerade. Did we start going to Porterdale around this time also? Like the beginning of this year? Not beginning we of We started going to Porterdale, I think, at 4th of July or something. Or mm. St. Patrick's, Patrick's Day. Day. St. Patrick's it was like Day. once so, every big holiday. So at this point, we we're, were already doing months. like two shows a week. Yeah. yeah. And it was weekly. That's the other thing is this happened every week. So it was a place that you could just fill in the calendar and, you know, you could work with whatever you could get because you weren't going, there was no other booking for you to take on this night. There was no competition for it. I, I always thought it's something that just, I mean, sort of to answer my own question, but uh, just because I thought guys liked us because you could work a program, whereas a lot of times wrestling programs in some of the indies can be kind of bland. It's like, oh, well, you guys are going to wrestle a double DQ and then you'll come back and we'll have you guys do a blow off and you're like well that's not really that exciting whereas these were more story oriented I mean yeah. this show maybe is, is a little less ind- indicative of that yeah. but I do I think yeah, really like yeah. or he would enjoy like okay you're gonna get a story you're actually gonna get like some promo time and to kind of like build something yeah, and, and Steve had you know again he was he was booker of the year um you know six months before this because that would have been after 11 11 11 son of a bitch um so that would have been after that. He would have had that going for him. And the mad scientist reputation was out, and people kind of wanted to see, is he as good as he says he is? Is he as good as everybody tells me he is? So I'll go find out. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Fred's a young, like, having Fred Yeha, this young, crazy talent, I'm sure a lot of these guys wanted to see what that was about, too. And yeah. Shane was there, and the Bullets were there, so any tag team would certainly want to come there and work. Grandpa, whose baby is that behind you? I was going to say, who is that? <laughs> I have no idea. Is that coming out of your back? <laughs> that baby's strong. Um, that baby is flexing. <laughs> that baby's so yeah. strong. Sure. Motion for the torture act. Wait, the girl, girl who was a jacket edge, right? Nah, uh, uh, no. 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 Too much heat. Too much, too much heat, heat brother. <laughs> However, that could be Dodo. I think that might, that might be quasi, is that a quasi baby? Crystal wasn't pregnant by the end. I didn't think so. I don't know who black ass baby that is. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like she's gonna go for the neck breaker on you, Grandpa. You better watch out. <laughs> she's gonna go for the ears. She's gonna go for those ears. <laughs> don't make me call it. <laughs> Meanwhile, these two are just wrestling their asses off. I love yeah. you, Corey. <laughs> Duke was the Duke, best. You go Duke, Duke, look at Duke's faces. I mean, I, I don't feel like they upstage things. I don't know, Grandpa, you may have a, a different take on this, but I always like that his face looks like it's supporting the action, but not uh, making it like, look at me, I'm a referee. That was one of the things, Steve, I remember at one of the training sessions said, how would you react if you were watching a fight and you saw a nice move mm-hmm. or a hit? He said, react like that, but don't overdo it. And I think Duke did a great job of that. 
anytime that I ever look at pictures with Duke, I always think he's completely dialed in the moment. I think the same thing with you, Grandpa, is that you're always, it, you're, you're, it doesn't look like you're thinking about what you have to do next. It looks like you're thinking exactly like, this is what's happening and I'm reacting to it. Yeah, right. And, like, and working the horseshoe, obviously. Yeah, working the horseshoe. Work the horseshoe, brother. Work the horseshoe. And he has on long pants. <laughs> <laughs> gotta respect that. You gotta you respect, respect that. Twelve, twelve skinnies. Woo! Yeah, they Duke's got some room fit in fit well. <laughs> they just fit well, Jeter. Oh, God, my <laughs> shoulder. Oh, my shoulder. I think the finish of this gets cut off, cut off too. I'll make sure to make a note of that when it happens. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Matt, so you're going into these these shows uh, as a fan, but um, were you going into these? Were you more of a WrestleMan kind of fan, or were you more of a I like outrageous characters kind of guy? Well, so the way that I got here in the first place was I just moved to the area and I said, oh, man, I bet there's some shows I could go to because I didn't, you know, the, Alabama had dried up, you know, by the time I was really old enough to be going to shows and TNA would come through Huntsville ever so often. WWE and WCW make those stops, but like I just hadn't seen a lot of live wrestling. And uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I just Googled independent <clears throat> wrestling promotion, wrestling. Or Georgia. And so I'm looking and I'm going through this. And I see this. I see WA4 and I see this. I see this. And I'm going through the PCW thing and I see Dwight Power and Rachel Tension. I said, I'm home. So, no, <laughs> I was here. I was here for Wackadoodle because I was not watching a lot of ROH and stuff now. I like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm continental. Like I grew up on continental in Memphis. So that's what I was, that's what I was coming for. Yeah. And to walk in and see like the fucking concrete gorillas and, the the avant-garde were feuding with each other when I first got there. And I'm like, this is, yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm here for all this. And then Grotesque shows up like, yep, this is the stuff I like. Did you, I mean, I was always torn because like you'd have a match like this where you're like, these are two really good wrestlers and things solid. Like John and, and uh, Shane wrestling is really solid. But it's, a lot of the people were not, myself included, I'll include myself in that, uh, aren't, weren't like solid wrestle, wrestle men. I mean, did you feel like that made the card feel uneven or did you just feel like that was kind of part of the No, it, it, it never bothered me because after, you know, the first couple of shows, I was just in. It was like, whatever they're doing, I love it. It was, it was very kind of ECW, like, and I know, that, I know that's sort of an old, an old trope for PCW anyways, but it was like that. Like, I understood that the work rate sometimes in ECW was a little goofy and, you know, I knew 911 was a guy that couldn't wrestle. But mm -hmm. I didn't care because the story protected. I'm, I'm in any wrestling. I'm just here for the story. And the story was so strong that I didn't need, I was ready to forgive. And, you know, at, by this time, I would have known, oh, this is a school as well. And some of these guys are just getting started. So, yeah, I got to give them a little, I got to give them a little ground. Now, if somebody new came in who I didn't know, a la William Huckabee, and he was bullshit, I was going to let him know, <laughs> you are bullshit. You're not Steady. one of our guys, so you have not earned any gravitas from me. <laughs> I agree. I, 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 even though David the guys Rick. that weren't as great as the others, it was still the storyline. They all told a story that we got pulled into. Yeah. And like, I remember loving Michael Cannon immediately. And like, yeah. I don't give Got a shit. A I just love that guy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Dance what? with the body is great. <laughs> And like, you know, shit like Mr. Jones versus De La Vega is a match I remember. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> oh, who's that? Who's that popping in? What? There's a drunk robot that guy. came in here. Oh, Anita Monet. Oh, and Marco. She is going in. Y'all can't hear. <laughs> I've turned her loose. Don't she can go now. Me. Oh, no, not the – don't grab the wig. So Nina Monet comes in and fucks it up. She gets her wig <laughs> snatched, and then Corey Hollis rolls up Fred for the pin there. That is how this show ended. Uh, <laughs> are they are they crown jewel at this point? Or who – Yeah. The yes, yes. Okay. So that's, why, yeah, that's why I think you may be O-Dub back there because it wouldn't have been – it would have only been three months or four months since our last show. 
Okay. Um, so I think you were, and based on the date of Touch Your Thingies, I think you were still Crown Jewel at this point. Or maybe they hadn't <laughs> brought you in yet. Maybe you were about to become. We you know. hadn't brought them in yet. <laughs> Who up you her? We, <laughs> oh, damn it. God damn it. <laughs> Uh, all right. Back. So that wraps up <laughs> this particular episode. Any final thoughts on this one, gang? Um, it was a great win by me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Bill, what no, do you, I, I mean, that, so you've got through the episode. This is probably one of the one of the first of the early episodes that you've seen, or maybe the first or second one. I mean, what do you? Are you think if you would have met us at this time, you would have been like? Oh, that's a fun thing. Or have you been like, this is kind of mm -hmm. some podunk mm -hmm. shit. I yeah, can no, tell you right now, now that I thought this is a fun thing. <laughs> the question was for Bill. Go, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I fixed her wagon. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing, the thing that uh, I don't remember if it was Myers or Hankin said about how how you know the different here was they ran stories, and that would have grabbed me immediately. Yeah, because that was always my issue too. Is that you would go to these places and they would just have matches. I remember like Pete State had me do a match with Johnny Swinger, and then the next match was a loser leaves town because we had so much bad blood after one match. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? They escalated, escalated quickly. <laughs> also, they threw that on me. Like I found that out that day, and I was like, "Wait, am I really leaving town?" <laughs> but, but yeah, no, I would have definitely, I would have definitely gravitated more towards this than you know, the other stuff that was out there. Oh, that just, fucking Butcher thing would have been gangbusters here. Oh, absolutely. Oh, could you imagine grotesque versus yeah, Bill That's the first thing I thought was the Butcher fucking grotesque feud would have been incredible. It's fuck this, yeah, the yeah, fucking it's stare off alone. I, really like, I feel like I missed out. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And you definitely had a mixed baby by now if you were around back then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what the saying is, folks. When we hear the big Jeter laugh, that means it's time to get out of here. Thank you for spending a Friday or uh, Saturday night with me. You can tell the quarantine zone because all of us are here and bored on a fr on a Saturday night. Um, we will be back probably in a week. You know how we do these things. We're loose. We play it loosey goosey. We'll see what happens. Uh, I'll put together another episode. But until then, this has been the Rassel Men. A whoop cast, tiger mask, take us home. Uh,